Welcome to the Griptastic Gymnastic Ultimate Workout. So this session is very unique and different because it focuses mainly on the grip and gymnastic type exercises. So watch it through to the end. I think you're going to learn some things and find out some new exercises to try out. So I'm starting off with the Eagle Loop Deadlift. I got these from Iron Mind and I'm basically trying to work on my finger strength. A lot of you guys have been asking me, Alex, how do you get your grip so strong? And this is one of the main compound movements that I've been doing. Now, this exercise is very, very, very stressful on the fingers. It taxes your recovery like no other. And after doing this, you can't really go heavy on a strapless compound. So if you're gonna perform this exercise, make sure that you time it correctly because you're gonna be destroyed after doing this. The pain is immense. And what boggles my mind is the fact that there are guys on YouTube who have done a thousand pounds on this lift, which is just craziness. So I'm obviously a beginner to this lift. All right, I really hope I don't snap my fingers up because this is gonna hurt like hell. Look how much chalk I put. This is really gonna hurt. So let's do it. So yeah, this is a 585. It's the best that I could do. I'm gonna try to work up to a thousand if possible. That would be very nice, but uh, this is extremely stressful on the fingers. I gotta say, man, it hurts. But uh, yeah, that's just the main compound for the grip. After that, we're gonna move on to some accessory stuff. So that's the Eagle Loop deadlift. Really, really taxing. Damn, that hurts. Check it out. It's like, ooh. It's having a hard time closing, man. It really hurts. But that right there. It's gonna build very, very, very good grip strength. Now here's where things get fun. We're gonna do some finger pull-ups, all right? Again, using the eagle loops. Now each set, I'm going to remove some fingers. Right now, I'm only using four fingers minus the thumb. After that, it's gonna get more and more intense. And with the L hold, it makes it more taxing on the grip, more difficult, more stabilization required. So this is the next set, three fingers, no index or thumb. These last three fingers, typically, that's where you're gonna fail when you do a heavy pull. You're gonna slip out. I would say the ring and the pinky are gonna slip. So if you can work those weak links by doing stuff like finger pull-ups, you're all good. So then, here is the next set. Boom, two fingers, ring and pinky. This really, really, really hurts. I felt like I was freaking paralyzed after doing this in my hands because uh, it's your ring and pinky, which are the two weakest fingers. And you gotta pull up your entire body weight. I'm 186 pounds. So this isn't easy, okay? And uh, it's, at this point, it's like the L hold is very, very difficult to maintain, okay? But if you wanna get extreme finger strength, you don't have to do heavy weights. Just uh, hang off with your body weight and use your fingers. So I'm gonna keep mastering this. I'm gonna keep focusing on these finger pull-ups. And once I could do a lot of repetitions, say 20 or so, then uh, I guess I'll start doing it weighted, all right? So yeah, that really hurt, as you can see. <laughs> All right, so now here's the most difficult part of the finger pull-up, which is my first time doing it. Middle fingers only. So I am now supporting my entire body weight with just my middle fingers. And you might think that this is uh, <laughs> easy-ish, but trust me, it's not. It's very, very, very hard. Even more difficult than the ring and uh, the pinky. So it's your freaking middle finger, dude. You're supporting your entire body weight with just your middle finger. So it's very effective, extremely challenging, but I'm working on it. And the more you can develop that finger strength, the stronger you're gonna be in other aspects and your forms will definitely get bigger as well. So I'm really choosing a unique niche here. I'm specializing in fingers. So yeah, now my hands are a bit too destroyed. So I decided to do some gymnastic type training. Are you gonna see, I'm gonna go from this back to the grip workout later, all right? So it's a standard L hold followed by a gymnastic ring pull up. So if you actually do the math, uh, I did a lot of pull-ups this workout. A lot of pull-ups, let me tell you. So just did some uh, 10 reps of this, pretty easy. Now you're gonna see the third set. I'm not gonna show you every set, otherwise this workout's gonna be way too long. So this is set number three. You can see that my L hold is not really the best right now because I'm kind of fatigued. My core is a bit fatigued and I tend to have a tendency of bending my legs a little bit. But um, the gymnastic ring pull-up is really, really good. It's gonna hit your biceps really hard, your lats hard, you can freely rotate the rings, hit your core as well, it's fantastic. So yeah, enough of that, here's some ring support. Now, I used to do a lot of gymnastic ring stuff in the past, but because it's my first time doing the rings in a long time, 
I'm keeping it basic. Just some simple ring support, some novice level stuff for the most part. And uh, you can see the rings are a little bit spread apart. So it's causing it to be even more unstable. But um, what I'm really trying to focus on is external rotation, uh, locking my arms out and being as upright as possible. But I got to say, it's very, very difficult. I mean, I don't know if it's because of my elbows or due to mobility or just lack of strength, but I find it difficult to fully supinate my hands with my own external rotation while keeping an upright torso. So it's hard. It's very, very hard. Like I have no problem. If I use a pronated grip and I just do regular dips, it's not a problem. It's when you ask me to twist. And that's what a lot of gymnasts uh, were saying. They had come over to my channel when I used to do the yoke uh, nasty type stuff. And they were like, Alex, what you have to do is dip all the way down, but at the top, twist so that you have full external rotation. So the external rotation makes it way, way, way harder. And that's what I'm trying to build, the external rotation strength, as well as uh, just, just standard ring support. And by starting off with the basics, it will allow me to do uh, more advanced moves later on in the future because I really do want to start specializing with the rings. I mean, doing a lot of gymnastics. I'm very interested in it. It's very fun, unique, different, and I want to push myself with these rings. Even though I'm a beginner, I'm a noob, and some of you guys may laugh, it's something that I find fun and I enjoy it. So I'm going to keep pushing it. So this is the ring support. You can see it gets more stable as the sets pass by. I'm just getting more comfortable with the rings. And um, if you guys have some advice or any tips or resources that you could guide me for mastering this external rotation, that would be um, really appreciated because right now I'm having a difficult time doing this. It's just as difficult, you know? So yeah, that's really all there is to it. Uh, I'm not going to do some other stuff. I decided to do some inverted curls to hit the biceps. Now the form is probably not the best. I've seen some guys do this with bent legs. Um, I'm trying to maintain hollow body. I'm not sure how well I'm doing that. Again, uh, I don't really do these movements. I'm really a guy who lifts weights. That's my specialty. So I'm brand new to the gymnastic type stuff. So if my form shit, I apologize. But yeah, now I'm doing this. This is just to stretch out the biceps. I learned this from uh, Twisting Nether. It's not a pelican curl, okay? So don't try to think that I'm doing that. It's just, it's a weighted stretching movement for the biceps. And I feel that when you do this after your curls, you get a really good pump and you could feel your biceps like crazy. So I just superset every time. I did three sets of inverted curls and then uh, superset with this every time. So yeah, here's some ring push-ups. Again, trying to build that ring support. I put a little uh, four inch block underneath me to uh, increase the range of motion. I don't know if that's making a big difference or not. I tried it without, but it felt a little bit easier. So yeah, I'm just doing standard ring push-ups. Okay. I don't know if you're supposed to externally rotate on this. I'm just doing it for some extra volume in the chest and the triceps and the shoulders. Again, I, I didn't feel like doing overhead press or bench today. I just wanted to do gymnastics. I wanted to come in, hit some grip with some effective movements, and then uh, do some gymnastic stuff. All right, because uh, trust me, guys, just doing powerlifting type training or strongman type training, it's not going to have the best carryover to your rings. I mean, you're going to have a certain degree of strength there, but this is very specific. You actually, you have to practice rings to get better at it. And that's really where I want to focus on. And to do that, I got to focus more on it, you know? So yeah, here's some bent arm shadow planches. I could still do it after like a year plus of not performing this. It's like my last set. I'm just freestyling it, going into it. I know it's not a straight arm planche, but I just wanted to see if I could still do the bent arm. So I think that's pretty good, man. I'm going to now start focusing on the straight arm straddle. I did it once, right? But I'm going to try to get it again. I'm going to get my straight arm straddle, then a straight arm full planche. And again, I just want to get better at these bodyweight movements. I find it's very fun. So yeah, now we're back to the grip training because uh, my fingers have recovered a little bit. That's why I did the gymnastics beforehand. And now I'm doing the country crush one arm deadlift, right? This is basically a more advanced version of the rolling thunder. For one, it's a two inch handle. And secondly, it rolls in your hand like crazy. So this is not an easy exercise. It's a very, very, very difficult way of gripping weights, but it will have carryover to all of your poles and it's great for arm wrestlers, great for arm wrestlers, great for competitors of grip sport. It really will build your forearms like crazy. Look at my forearms. You see that development? I've been doing a lot of these and I'm telling you it works because it's not about how much weight you're using. It's about the leverages and what it does. This opens up your hand. It's rolling as you're lifting, you know? And with the one arm, it just makes it that much more difficult. When you do two arms, you can kind of press it against your legs and cheat a little bit. But I find one arm 
basically it's a rolling thunder but two inch handle uh this will build amazing grip strength so this is how i decide to kind of end off the heavy part of the grip workout just to you know trash those forearms so give this a shot if you have access to this in your gym you can use a v-bar handle attach some fat grips if you want to substitute but it's not gonna be the same you need to have the rolling aspect so yeah to finish off the grip hub farmer's walk this is way more difficult than a standard farmer walk this is pure 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 grip strength you're just grabbing the hub with your fingertips okay and the world record is only like 90 pounds on this and in 2012 it was like 50 pounds or something so i'm only using 15 pounds but i'm getting some volume and in fact this set was three minutes it was a three minute set non-stop and i had to speed it up i like five times the speed man so i'm telling you this is not easy but i'm, I'm working on that hub I want to get that at least 45 pounds. That would be a nice goal. A hub lift of 45 pounds. That's it for the grip. I decided to end off with some rear delts because uh, the rings, you know, it's a lot of support. And I want to make sure that my rear delts are never a lagging area. I think rear delts are the most important part of the shoulder. Uh, it's very important for aesthetics and for shoulder health. So I like rear delt flies, band face pulls, stuff like that. These are 15 pound dumbbells using some really good strict form. I'm uh, squeezing. I'm, I'm not going too low at the bottom so i can keep tension on the muscle in a sense and you can see like my rhomboids are popping out it's pretty cool eh but yeah rear delts you can never have too much rear delt and i've been hitting them a lot every workout i'm doing about 100 repetitions or so so this is a little thing that i came up with you go to the side 15 and then you go to the back when you go to the back it allows you to externally rotate so it builds posture and again it hits the rear delts pretty nicely as well as uh, the upper back and the traps so it's a nice little super set. I did three sets of that. And also I hit some neck work, but because it was very long, I decided not to include in this workout. Plus it's the same thing that I showed you last time. So that's it for this griptastic gymnastic training session. It was very fun. I hope you learned some things and I hope you can appreciate my journey. Appreciate my grind on this uh, gymnastic type stuff.